uh, hope you've had a uh, wonderful morning. Hope uh, the, uh, the Lord blesses you today. Thankfully, he's allowed us to wake up. Uh, before we go ahead and get in our devotion, let's go ahead and go for the Lord in prayer. Lord, I thank you for this day, watching over us. Thank you for being in our presence today, Father. Lord, we ask that you please go with us uh, in this devotion, in our minds and our hearts, what you have us to hear. Please keep us well. Please bless our region, bless our country, Father. Lord, please be with us in each and every way. In Jesus' name, my friend. Okay, everybody. Uh, we're going uh, on to uh, continue uh, with the names of God. Uh, all the brothers uh, uh, before me have had a wonderful uh, lesson. Uh, we'll kind of build on some of that today. Uh, but we're continuing in the names of God, and especially uh, in Judges chapter 6. The uh, book of Judges, uh, just to give some background, is uh, some time between uh, Joshua, the one who led uh, after Moses, and the prophet Samuel. And at this time, continued uh, history of Israel has, uh, has not been very good. It has been one of they're following God, following his commandments. Uh, they go into disobedience. Uh, they uh, are taken captive. They, God brings up a judge or someone that is a, a hero in their eyes. Uh, the country then comes back to redemption, to forgiveness, and then comes back to God as a way of uh, coming back to him and then being blessed by him again. Um, basically, the book is to really reveal the power and faithfulness of Jehovah God. And I think that is one of the most uh, striking lessons that uh, I got now to the study. But basically, God loves Israel so much. He loves me and you so much that even though there is a cycle in this madness sometimes of uh, we love you, God, we want to be with you, we want to do your commandments, uh, but we are also uh, failing in some areas. Uh, the Lord corrects us and then brings us back. And if the Lord loves you, he will correct you and he will bring you back uh, to him. Um, as Brother Andrew put out yesterday, I had a wonderful lesson in, in, to, to really go into this cycle of sin. Uh, in, in Judges, Israel is a, is a warning not only of these uh, actions that they take to the book of Judges, but basically to show other generations not to do these things. And it also is a lesson to the church. Uh, we are not uh, immune to these types of actions, just like the, the nation of Israel was. Um, peace in the land and Israel serves the Lord usually starts out in each of these situations that Israel goes through. Uh, they are in a good spot. God has blessed them. God has drove out all of their enemies. And at some point or another, Israel does evil in the eyes of the Lord. God punishes Israel. Israel is normally taken over or enslaved. Israel cries out for deliverance. God raises up a judge. Israel then is delivered. They redeem uh, themselves to God, and then the cycle starts all over again. And there are several of these judges uh, that are mentioned in the book. During these times of enslavement, God would provide a hero they would deliver them. One of my favorites, uh, even as a kid growing up, was Samson. Uh, I kind of looked at him as the, uh, the biblical superhero of having all this strength, but basically to deliver them out of the hands of the Philistines. But they, this is one thing they have to remember is it's not the judge, it's not the person, it's not the character that is in the book of Judges. They didn't do this out of their own power, but it was divinely endowed with courage, strength, and victory from uh, Jehovah God, their provider. Um, we'll go ahead and start reading in, in Judges 6, uh, starting at verse 7. And it came to pass when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord because of the Midianites, that the Lord sent a prophet unto the children of Israel, which said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I brought you up from Egypt and brought you forth out of the house of bondage. And I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of all that oppressed you and drove them out before you and gave you their land. 
This is God talking to a prophet to say, Israel, I have loved you. I have brought you out of enslavement, out of Egypt. I have been before you. I have drove out all the other nations, all the other gods, all the other idols. Before you, I have given you this land. I have kept my promise that I gave to Abraham. I've done all these things for you because I love you. In verse 10, he says, And I said unto you, I am the Lord your God. Fear not the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you dwell, but ye have not obeyed my voice. What a condemning last part to that, to that verse. God says in these uh, four verses, I have loved you so much, and I have provided you so much in protection for you so much, that I would continue doing this. Don't fear other nations. Don't fear these idols that uh, are presented to you. Uh, you are in a foreign land, but I've given this land to you. But, such a sad word, but you have not obeyed my voice. You've not turned toward me. You've not obeyed me. You have chased after other idols. You have chased other gods. You have sinned against me but you have not obeyed my voice. It is so sad to hear that. Uh, God is saying, I've heard you in the past, and I've brought you out of bondage. I've done this again and again for you as you went into the land that I promised you. But you know what? I love you so much that, we will, that I will correct you. And that's when the trials have come to the land of Israel. In Proverbs 3.12, the Lord says, for whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth, even as a father, the son, and whom he delighteth. If you have a child and it's not love, then there isn't any correction. There's no one to do whatever you want to do. If you make mistakes, you make mistakes. But if a, a parent loves that child, they will correct that child. They will bring them up in the fear and admonition of the Lord. They will show them the way that needs to happen. Uh, I used to say, uh, as a kid, my mom and dad must have really, really loved me because I got a lot of correction. Uh, but I probably all delivered, I also deserved all of it too. But um, uh, if a, a parent loves their child, uh, they will correct it. And so does the Lord. The Lord sees you individually. He sees where you're at and your relationship with him. Uh, if, you're, if you're going off, if you are removing yourself from him, uh, he will correct as Brother Tommy said Sunday, if you've ever been corrected by God, it's not a real fun thing to go through, but he loves you enough to bring you closer to him. Uh, in Hebrews 1, 1 through 12, uh, 1, uh, 1 and 2, uh, Paul states to the Hebrews, says, God, who in sundry times, in different times, in past times, in diverse manners, in times past, unto the Father, spoke by the prophets. He spoke to the nation of Israel by uh, prophets that came forward to say, this is the correction that you need to have. This is the direction that you uh, should do. This is how you stay close to God and it's a part of uh, his providing. In verse 2, Paul says, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world. In the church age, we all have prophets, we have our pastors, but most of all, we have Jesus Christ. And Paul is saying in these last days, we are given this direction by Jesus Christ. And he has appointed the heir of all things. You know, Jesus Christ was our provider, uh, our person, uh, our protector uh, for the church and ourselves. We just need to look to him. Jesus is there to protect and provide for us. How is God using our current circumstances in this world, in this time that we're living in, um, by doing things like this, uh, having devotions each day, to have uh, online services, uh, keeping everyone safe, but yet still continuing to work on your relationship with God. Jesus Christ has shown us the path to take to obedience and blessings through God. We just need to open our heart to what he has to tell us. Hope you got something out of that. Hopefully the Lord has given you something uh, uh, to think on and pray about. I know this has been a good study uh, for us. Uh, we hope that you have a wonderful day. 
and uh, we'll see you at church soon.